Besides that, we have, according to Google Research, that found it, we have 576 Indian internal calls. And again, there is a, another CRPC, how we proceed for all that uh, calls. So many things are there. So when I look into this, then I compare with today's what I want to share. Jesus, today Jesus disciple, Jesus did not make so many rules, only three rules he has given. The shortest constitution, the shortest rule on the country that is in Monaco, they have only 97 rule articles only. And with that they rule, and in the United States, in, I think in California, they have only 29 articles. The, from the 30 articles, 29 articles, they rule the whole uh, state or maybe the country. But India has so vast, we have so many rules to follow, so many norms to follow. By saying this, as we reflect back what I have said, Jesus has the most, has the most shortest rule, the one who saved the entire humanity and who suffered for all of us. He did not play so many rules, not like our Indian constitutions, not like any other constitutions that here in, in this world. So Jesus' number one golden rule is deny oneself. Deny oneself. Deny oneself means deny self-trust. Today, in this world, in this situation, we are so confident of ourselves, we are so confident of self-trust that we don't make mistakes. Sometimes we are self-trust in our education, sometimes we are self-trust in our wealth, in our abilities, in our expertness, in our skillful, in our family, in our experience, in our society, and also in our expertness. We, are, we, are, we don't want to trust someone. We are so much confined ourselves. Self, well, denying oneself means avoid certain things. Yes, we have so many desires. We have so many wishes. But when we say number one golden rule is a denying oneself. Means we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to go there, we want to be here, we want to be we want to be here, we want to be somewhere else. But when we say deny oneself means we cannot do that. Avoid certain things. Avoid which is not applicable in this rule. That's why Jesus number one golden rule is or maybe the norm is a deny oneself. Deny oneself means sacrifice of our habits. Maybe our habits of eating food, maybe way of how we dress, isn't it? Especially I used to give an example of a, a hen. When the hen hates for 21 days or 32 days, she also desires to breed like any other chicken, maybe hen, want to go along, want to play. But she has to combine there for a 20 or 21 days or 22 days in order to get a new life or to produce a new life. Sometimes this is what we mean, deny oneself, means sacrifice something of our desire, our habits. Deny oneself means sacrifice, as I said, our dress. We want to wear like that. We want to get that privilege, we want to get that opportunity. But we, do, we have already denied, we have already, um, what to say, removed, not exactly removed, we have uh, left all this privilege and opportunity and wish. And that's why this is number one rule that we see in to be a disciples of Jesus Christ. Deny. One 
yourself means you are no longer for yourself. You are no longer for yourself. But for someone whom you truly believe to be superior than you. You are no longer yourself, especially the graduating students. You are no longer yourself. You are for someone else who is superior than you. That's why we have to deny ourselves, deny oneself. Deny oneself means in an implication of empty ourselves. Empty oneself means we have to be empty ourselves. And then only maybe the other things can be filled up. If we don't empty ourselves, nothing will be here. We cannot fill up. We cannot fill up. We cannot uh, put into the another substance when we are not empty ourselves. Therefore, especially when we deny ourselves, we are lightened ourselves. We are lightened. We have made ourselves lightened to carry the Lord. And that's why Bible says, Matthew 6 24 says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Of course, this is particularly mentioned about money. But as I said, if we don't deny ourselves, we don't be serving a two master. That is, Jesus and myself will be serving two masters. And when we serve two masters, we cannot please two masters. Then our ministry, our life will be a miserable situation. Philippians 4 13 says, I can do all things through him who is strengthened me. If we depend ourselves, if we depend, if we don't deny ourselves, that means we will always depend on our strength, our ability, our expertise, our expertness, and also our educations, then we may not depend on the strength of Jesus Christ. Therefore, golden rule number one, to be disciples of Jesus, to be a true follower, or maybe a true servant of Jesus Christ is a denying oneself. Okay? Rule number two is take up the cross. Take up the cross. I believe the Christians are here. Maybe no one is here who is not a Christian. I just assume it. When you see this one, on the cross, Christ removed all our sins and our sin and our sins he has removed here. When you look into the history, maybe when you look into the uh, tradition of certain uh, biblical Backgrounds of those geographical areas like Egyptian, like Babylonian, like uh, Persian, Roman, Greek, all that we when we see, the cross was a capital punishment. When we when this here, when, when they see the cross, they were terrified. The whole every citizen city when talk about when uh, when they are uh, talk about the cross, they always say this. I mean, terrified, especially when we say sentence in the high court, in the Supreme Court, sentence is a capital punishment. In the same way, the word cross is among them was like that. And that was happened in the time of Jesus Christ. But Christ has a different significance for this cross. Especially, especially, as I said, those countries, when they saw, when they hear, when they talk about the cross, they were terrified. However, in the Bible we see, cross became a light giver. A cross became a light giver. Cross became a bridge. It's not the capital punishment. It became a bridge where from one end to another it can cross. Where relationship could have jo could join. Cross is an open way. It was cross. 
in order to reach God, but close open the way. Close the way to eternal life. Close the way to eternal life. Without cross, there is no eternal life. On the cross, we receive salvation. On the cross, not on the baptism, we receive salvation. Not in the going to the church, we receive salvation. Not in studying theological colleges, seminars, we receive salvation. On the cross, we receive salvation. On the cross, we are forgiven. On the cross, we are forgiven. Not that we give tithes, we are forgiven, our sins are forgiven. <coughs> Not that we have attended highest degree, PhD, double, triple PhD, and our sins are forgiven. But on the cross, our sins are forgiven. On the cross, the love has been demonstrated. And on the cross, our sins are washed away. Love has been demonstrated on the cross. Love is not demonstrated on the, in the palace, in the ivory palace, in the AC room. It was demonstrated on the cross of Calvary. On the cross are wounded. Wounds are healed. We were wounded. We were healed on the cross. And cross is a symbol of victory. Cross is a symbol of victory. Hence, no cross, no crown. Graduate students. No cross, no crown. So, we are reminded of Isaiah 53, from there we, we are reminded, I'm not going to read that one. So, I just want to quote this one. Many men wanted to be God, but listen carefully. Many men, or maybe many human, wanted to be God. Only one God became a name. Only one God became a name. That is Jesus Christ. Only one God, He wants to be a human being. But all of us, we want to be a God. And why do we want to be in a position of God? But only one man, or man God, who want to be a man, who want to be a human being. Therefore, I request the graduating students, don't forget to take up your cross. Okay, some of you are already in the ministry. Some of you will be very soon, you will be engaged in the ministry. Some of you will be going for your further study, but on the cross, we have everything. Therefore, let us look in a positive way of the cross today. Without cross, no crown. Therefore, I request, take up your cross. Okay, take up your cross. And lastly, follow me. The last golden rule for the for to be a disciple, to be a servant of God, of Jesus Christ, is follow him. After denying oneself and take up the cross, and, and the third, the last one, is finding the disciple to follow him. The word follow me is an invitation. Is it not compulsory? Please, Takam Sar, please follow me. I just invite. I'm not saying, Takam, you must follow me. I say, your principle, please follow me. It signifies the invitation. It is an open invitation. It is not compulsory. It is not bound one. If we decide to follow him, there, there shouldn't be any regret. Okay? I have decided to follow Jesus as a full-time worker. 28 December 1987, and I don't regret by following him today. Therefore, once you have denied yourself, you have taken up the cross, and it is a pro continuous process that we have to follow Jesus Christ. And that's why we have to keep in mind. The start and final golden rule to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. It is I who accepted his invitations and decided to go after him. Okay? It is you who accepted and his invitation. It was an open invitation. It was everybody hearing, everybody knowing, everybody 
could ever go, respond to the uh, invitations, but only you have responded to him. And you have decided to go after him. And therefore, there shouldn't be any regret. As we are following him, there shouldn't be any murmuring, any complaint when we follow him. When I, was, I have seen in this ministry of 29 years in uh, MSCC, many of us are murmuring. Yes, I am also included in that place. Sometimes we murmur this and that. Sometimes we complain one after another. Sometimes we complain to the pastors, to the general secretary, to us, uh, uh, this HODs and our pastors, our elders. There are so many complaints after complaints. But Jesus said, we have decided to follow him. We should live in my mind. Because we have, personally, I have accepted this invitation and I have decided to follow him. And therefore, I request the president students not to murmur, but just to follow. We should not look back or turn him back. When we follow him, we should not walk we should not walk according to our ways. Many of us, including Choya, when I'm in the ministry, I just want to walk according to my way. I don't want to follow someone. Leave aside the quality, aside the Jesus Christ. Even we don't want to follow certain norms of the council, certain norms of the institutions, or maybe certain norms of the, of the church. We just want to do as I wish, as you wish. But the Bible says, if we do that, we are against this golden rule. But to follow according to his footstep, step on his footprints, we are asked to follow on his footprints. Sometimes we want to overtake. Sometimes we are behind. Sometimes we go one wish to go beside. By way, some way, we want to go. We don't want to go. But the problem the world is we have to do that. When we follow him, there shouldn't be any some way or by way to follow, but to follow only his way. We have sometimes we create so many by way, some way. We want to go that way. We don't want to follow his way. And that's why sometimes we have a lot of problems and chaos in our ministry, in our life. We shouldn't have a doubt when we follow him. Let us not doubt when we follow after him. Follow him means to follow him everything, same person. Maybe as a human being we cannot follow him as a person sometimes, as I said, as a human being we have a lot of weaknesses. Yet, with our utmost sincerity, let us follow him the highest percentage that we can ever do follow him. Then, follow him means to follow him in all seasons. Sometimes we want to follow him in a good season. Sometimes we don't want to follow him when we are dead season. But Bible says we have to follow him in all seasons. Rainy season, sunny season, uh, winter season, summer season, cold season. Any season when you are hungry, when you are well fed, when you are abundant, any time, any season, we have to follow him. Follow him means to follow him at any time. Any time. Maybe in the midnight, okay? Maybe in early in the morning, maybe late at night, okay? Maybe when I am not keeping well, we have to follow him. Follow him means to follow him at any condition. Okay, any condition. Whether you may be rich, poor, or you are well to do, you are talented or not talented, whatever it may be. Any condition, we have to follow him. Follow him means to follow him at any position. Sometimes we are to or tend to follow him when I became a general secretary. I tend to or tend to follow him when I became a, somewhere else in a foreign land. But Bible says we have to follow him at any positions. Whether you are in the chokidar or whether you are in the peon, whether you are in a 
GS level where you are, principal where you are there, teaching level, we have to follow him. So graduating students, follow him at any position. You will be having a good position in your ministry. Don't forget, don't go away, don't just go by subway or, or by way, just go his way and follow him at any position. Follow him means we will go after him, not to go beside him or go before him. We have to follow him, not just in a parallel way, don't run ahead of him, just follow him. Follow him means we will reach the place, the place where where he reached. John 14, 1 Corinthians. We will reach where he is here. If we follow him, if we don't follow him, we will be lost on the way. We will face on the way and we will not ever reach where he is. To follow him means we will be there where he is. So, these golden rules, three golden rules to be a disciple, to be a servant of Jesus Christ is the only rule, is the only golden rule that is in, found in the Bible. Therefore, as a country we have so many rules and norms, as a church we have so many no rules and regulations, as a council we have uh, an NPCC, we have part one, part two, there's a constitution, there's a bylaws, so many other years, again, so many articles, so many rules, bylaws are there, but Christ is only three rules to be a very effective this, uh, service of God. Therefore, I request the graduate students, deny yourself. Okay, as I have already explained, take up the cross and follow him. Only those who fulfill these above basic golden rules may be true servant of Christ or maybe Jesus Christ. Others will be nominal disciples of Jesus Christ. Others will be a great honor servant of God among our church. Others will be just for a name sake and for a, uh, I was able to serve the God the church. Therefore, I request and hope these 22nd graduating students are truly followers of Jesus Christ. And also, you will have to maintain these three golden rules in your life. Maybe some of all you have practiced and keep doing. And if you do that, you will never regret, you will never fail to follow him and also achieve your time. If anyone is still yet to follow or practice these three golden rules, as you are presenting today, may I ask you to affirm to follow them. And as I say, fail to internalize, fail to practice these golden three golden rules of Jesus in your life will always yield a low rating of our ministry. If we don't do that, always we will have it in the ministry, but our yieldings, our production will be very low, very minimal. So that's why let us follow this rule. So personalize it for a high and bumper products of your ministry and even in your life. Thank you. May God bless all of us to be a true disciples or to be a true servant of Jesus Christ by following these three golden rules of Jesus Christ to be effective in this.